Hello, it's Johnny here for another A52 tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to do more of a comparison video. So if you're sort of working in After Effects and you're wanting to start animating in a reel, we're going to be looking at like you know the similarities and some of the differences between there, particularly working with timelines and sequences. So let's jump in and get going with an example. So my example is going to be a very sort of simple loading screen animation. In fact, I'm basically going to take reference again from Persona 5, just like in the in my last tutorial video. We did the speech ball from there, because I've been playing a lot of that recently. And we're going to use this as a comparison base. So I've quickly just thrown together two very quick images. If you haven't seen the loading screen on there, it's very similar to the loading screen in Uncharted where we just have an icon, an item in the bottom right corner that rotates. So simple loading screen stuff. And what these do is, like I say, they rotate on their axis. So I'm going to turn these both to 3D layers and add the rotation. This is Y rotation. Cool, so this happens perhaps over not too sure, maybe over like two seconds. Like that. And the same thing for this one. Now, Seeing as we're emulating, we're going to want to do things a little bit similar, and the text actually starts a little bit before the face, a little bit after the face, sorry. And the first rotation is a bit bigger as well. Yep, 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 cool. So, in After Effects, what we would use if we want to sort of apply um, easing, we would use the graph editor tool. So at the moment we have the straight linear rotation. And what we're going to want to do is add some curve to this. So if I hold Alt, I can then drag out an arm. And let's sort of see what effect that this has. You see how we've basically, the first rotation is really slow and then it speeds up. Again, if I have to control Z that and pull this one that way, it should have the opposite effect. So the first rotation is slow, and the second one is fast. And again, in the loading screen of reference, the first one's quite fast, and then it comes to a slow end. So all I'm doing is just holding Alt to create this sort of curve. And I'm just going to repeat it on this one. Cool. So I mean Choosing how you're going to work is really going to come down to your own preference when it comes to animating in these various software. I'm very familiar with After Effects, I've been using it for years, a lot longer than I've been using Unreal, but each one has pros and cons. In the Uncharted 4 loading screen, we have the rotating, like say, ring. I think that was Uncharted 3. We have the ring that rotates, and that's a 3D object. That would be really difficult to create in After Effects, because After Effects... It's pretty much rubbish with 3D. We'd have to create a Cinema 4D project, mess about with it in there, import the Cinema 4D project into here, rotate it in there, and then that's just it's use of other software. Whereas in After Effects, do you know, I mean, in a real sorry, we'd be able to just straight up import that image and then just have that rotating on a timeline. Okay, so let's jump across to Unreal and try repeating those steps in there. So here I've just created a quick blank template level so we can try out the effects and I'm just going to import them. 
Cool, so imported these. And let's drag them into the level editor. Just gonna put it out of here, of the way, out of the way of the rest of the stuff. Okay, so I've imported my files and next I'm just going to get my project set up, ready to create the whole thing. Let's open up cinematics and add a level sequence. I'm just going to call this loading screen. No, because I can't use underscores. Loading screen. And this is our sequencer. So this is sort of the equivalent to our After Effects setup down here. We just need to import our files. Add actor to sequencer. I think it's called face sprite, and we want to add actor. And I think it's called text sprite. Text sprite. Okay. And we are going to want to add a transform to both of these. I was trying to. And we're going to want to play with the scale. The rotation, sorry, what am I doing is scaled. We're going to want to play the rotation. So you okay, see how we're rotating on the Z axis in here, and in After Effects we rotate on the Y, Z was up and down. Just a small note of comparison, so make sure you're fully aware of which one we're working in. Alright, and since before we're going to add some keyframes, so in After Effects we press the stopwatch. In here, we're going to add like that. Add like that. So that's created our first keyframe. Let's go to our 100 mark and let's create, let's rotate. We want to do a full rotation. Whoa, went too far. Yeah, you know, it'd be a lot easier if I just type in 280. Don't know where the one came from. 280, and add another keyframe. And if we go back and press play, we see how it rotates. I mean, this is before we start like messing with the anchor point and stuff, but we see that it rotates. And what we want to do is, if we wanted to so get that more dynamic rotation, we need to bring up our graph editor again in here. And this time we press this key. So let's highlight our Z rotation. And we've got a few options in here. We've already got arms, we're not already set to linear, whereas in After Effects we're already set to linear. If we want to, we can right click and press that, or you know we can use Ash keyboard shortcuts, which is like you know one, two, three, four. But we want to be using user. We could also as well. Let's say let's for example click add shift to add another keyframe in here. You see how it auto creates as a curve? And you know, we can sort of play with this and press play, see how that looks. Kind of weird, but that's how we would go about adding more in there. We don't actually want you to get out of my face. And now, to the best of my ability of looking around, sort of playing, and even giving it a Google, in here, we can create these arms as long as we would like them. And that's going to make our animation really quite dynamic. And here, I can't adjust this. Maybe you know a way how. If you do, please let me know. But I cannot adjust the length of this arm. And, you know, I can really create, like, you know, it could be auto or it could be, like, user set. But 
how do I adjust this arm? It annoys the hell out of me. So instead what I've got to do is add more points, but you know, so tweak them to create that path, create that shape. So I mean, because we want the first part to be, you know, the slow build up, it means we've got to mess about sort of creating almost lots of these points to get the velocity. And yeah, it looks okay, but it doesn't look awesome. It looks okay, but it doesn't look awesome. Whereas the quick, easy nature of After Effects allows us to create this real quick. But, you know, back in here, we could then... In fact, let's just sort of try and auto-assign these. No, that looks terrible. Over to you as well. And that should create a softer rotation. And you only played a tiny little bit wide. So yeah, so there we go, we've added that. Let's take this information, let's go across to our rotation here. And what we could do is, in After Effects again, we can sort of copy all of our keyframes. Let's see if we can do the same in here. So Control C, highlight also, Control C, go across to our Z scale and press Control V. Nothing. Didn't seem to work. Whereas again, in After Effects, it makes the whole process a lot faster. We could just highlight this, let me exit my graph, you know, press Control C, delete those. Press Ctrl V, and then they both come across. So again, it's just is quicker and easier in After Effects to do that. Whereas in here, as far as again, to my knowledge, is there a way to copy and paste these? I don't think there is. At least not that I know of. So again, it's just another one does quick comparison and compares. So we'd have to. Repeat the process again in here to get our text rotating. And those are sort of like the core bare essentials. Like I said, the whole exercise that we're doing right now was just to create a comparison. So if this is a point, we'll add the keyframe. Let's zoom out a bit, go to our 100 mark. And then take you all the way around. It would help if I could see it. Take you all the way across. Not that far. This one. Two. So, 280. And again, yeah, we're we'll going, it's going to into our graph editor, select this and we've already got the auto curve. So again that's quite nice. Up here we have our frames per second which is kind of a nice way of sort of playing with things. Most games tend to try and run at 60 FPS now and we could even go up to 120 FPS which would be smooth. You'd like to imagine that would be smooth. Anyway let's press play and find out and let's rewind it and press play and find out and it did nothing why did you suddenly decide to do nothing maybe because I was in simulate hmm looks alright looked pretty smooth and that's at 120 if we were in After Effects and we press Control K to bring up our settings we can only go to a max of 60 FPS. So if you're creating like VR content and you need that minimum 90, you're going to want to create this in Unreal and not bring it across Raptor Effects. So there you go. Good points there. 
we've got you know a snapping tool and other kinds of grids as well in, in the level sequence so we can do a lot more creative things move a lot of things around but like I said we're just trying to recreate this loading screen for now let's pull you out of the way for a second and find our what did I call it? if only I remember what I called it I called you loading screen so we've got a loading screen Let's set you to autoplay and loop indefinitely there we go, looks, looks fairly good, looks pretty nice nice enough for us and ultimately like I said the whole idea is about how we'd so sort of take what we know in After Effects and how we'd create this animation and bring it across a problem with a negative with using After Effects would be we'd have to export even more. You know, let's say we export that as video and brought that in. It's not going to be as efficient as if we just made it in Unreal, where in Unreal, you know, it would be low in memory because it's just the, the program itself. We've just got the two sprites and then we're just rotating those on the sequencer. So that would be a lot better on the game and actually how the game's going to run if we want it to look nice. But if we wanted to do more advanced sort of transformations with you know your graph editor to get things really looking really smooth i recommend editing in after effects and bringing it in if you want to just you know get the basic sound get some basic movement then i'd say edit in unreal so you know so summarizing that point and again unreal does the 3d a lot easier than after effects which sort of struggles with that and becomes a pain in the bum and yeah, that's the whole idea. I just wanted to sort of compare like how it could work in After Effects and how it could work in Unreal using the sequences and the timeline. Hope you sort of found that information useful. And you know, this is sort of, like I said, the whole idea was to just give you an oversight of how we could take our work across from project to project. So thanks for your time.